the very early morning of May 3, 1990, in the suburbs of Lake Charles, Louisiana, most of the members of the Bellin family were sound asleep. But Angela Bellin, just two weeks away from the due date of her second child, had some news that she just couldn't keep to herself. Ronnie, Ronnie, get up. Get up. It's time? Yeah, you get this on the outside. Okay. Before heading for the hospital, Angela and her husband Ronnie plan to drop off her six-year-old daughter at the babysitter's house. When we got to the babysitter's, Angie was in extreme pain. We took her and we put her in the back seat to make her as comfortable as possible. We were going to go ahead and go on to the hospital. We made a half a block and Angie just started hollering and she was hurting and cramping and she was in severe pain. Come on, baby. Hang in there. We'll be okay. Come on, sweetheart. She's there, Ronnie, well, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I'm hurting too much. The nearest hospital was more than 15 miles away, so Ronnie rushed back home to call Angela's doctor. His 12-year-old son, Brandon, stayed by her side. It's going to be okay. I was telling Angie it's going to be okay. And Daddy's going to call the doctor and everything's going to be okay. And I feel the head. Go get your dad. When she told me the head was out, I really freaked. Cause I didn't know what was happening or what was gonna happen. Dad, baby's head's out. Oh my God, the head's out, Doc. What to do? And he just said to get an ambulance and get her comfortable. So I was gonna go call the ambulance. And like an idiot, I was going through the phone book trying to find it. Daddy, just call 911. At 1:45 a.m., the call came in to dispatcher Julie Elliott. What is your emergency? I got an emergency. I've got my wife having a baby. You have your wife having a baby? My wife's having a baby. She, the baby's halfway out. I live off Pinecone Drive. I need an ambulance immediately. The baby's halfway out? Yes, ma'am. I need help. When the call first came in, I really felt like, oh my gosh, I'm really going to have to help this man deliver his baby. I stopped breathing at that point along the line, I think, myself. This is 911. We have a lady in labor in Moth Bluff. The local volunteer rescue squad was immediately dispatched, along with an ambulance from five miles farther away. Is your wife laying down? She's in the car laying down. I can't move her. I have she's to in the what? Her. I can't get her out of the car. She's in the car? Right. We got the car. We're halfway out of the car. The baby's halfway out. She's in the car right now. We have flip charts that we use in the 911 center to step us through the calls that we receive. But Julie had never used the childbirth cards before. Sir, sir, what I want you to do is lay her down on the seat in the car. Okay, we did that. Okay, get some towels and put right underneath her rear end where the baby's coming out. Right, okay, okay. we we'll do that right now. Okay. Okay, the head is out. Right the head is out? Now. Yes. Okay. The baby's head was getting ready to come out. You can see a portion of it. The same token, I'm saying, I want to go find a closet and hide in it. I can't handle this. I'm squeamish, weak stomach. I passed out of that blood. I can't do this. Are you on a portable phone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of towels. Okay. Can you get an ambulance here? Quick, quick, quick. So my partner has called the ambulance. What I'm going to do is stay on the phone with you until we get the baby delivered, until they get there, okay? Okay. He was on a portable phone, and I knew I needed both of his hands free to be able to work and help get the baby out. I actually felt like I did want to jump through the phone to be there to do it for him. She's laying down. She's on laying the, down. The, the baby's back. head is completely out. The baby's head is completely out? Right. Okay. With each contraction, I want you to place your hand against her um Okay. The baby's coming out right now. What I do? When we continue. Mr. Bellon was so excited that I had to get control of him. And if he does something wrong, it could mean life or death. We all have our private nightmares, and Ronnie Bellon was living his. Squeamish at any sight of blood, he was stuck in the back seat of the family car. On the phone with dispatcher Julie Elliott, desperately trying to help his wife Angela give birth. <laughs> what do I do? The baby's coming out right now. You just put the baby in one of those towels, sir. <laughs> okay, hang on. Being the mother of two children, it was an ordeal to go through. 
And here is this poor lady screaming. And I felt so sorry for her because I knew there was nothing I could give her to help the pain go away. She was going to have to go through natural childbirth whether she was prepared for it or not. As the baby head delivers, press turn the head to the side. Do what now? As the baby head delivers, I want you to turn it okay. gently um, to the side. Can you hear me? The baby's, a, the baby's head's all out. Wait a minute, sir. I want you to turn it. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, ma'am conversation between me and her was really kind of crazy because the phone kept on slipping off my shoulder and kept on falling down because it was so slimy. So she had to ask the question several times and I had to repeat it. Okay, I want you to turn the baby's head to the side and I want you to clean the baby's mouth and nose. Turn the baby's head to the side? Yes, sir. I can't, I don't know what you mean, what side? To the side, sir, like it's laying down on the side of its face. Okay. Okay? She's saying, you got to turn the baby's head. The baby could suffocate. And it was like, oh my God, no. I can't do this. I can't do this. Mr. Bellon was so excited and so nervous that I had to get control of him. And if he does something wrong, it could mean life or death. She's there, and she kept on encouraging me. She kept on saying, yes, you can. You got to take control of this, and you got to handle it. It's just you, the man upstairs, and us. We got to do this. Okay, I'm, I did that. Can you clean the baby's mouth and nose with a dry towel? Do what now? Yeah. Is the baby's head is out? You said. Yeah. Okay. His head's right there. I'm holding on to the head. Okay. You have to remember something, sir. This baby's going to be very slippery when it comes out totally. Okay, it's coming out slowly. Okay, don't drop the baby. Okay, it's coming out. Okay. I was holding Angie's hand, and I was really nervous, but I was trying to comfort her and make sure that she was okay. I really loved her a lot, and I, I didn't want nothing to happen to her. Okay, here it comes out. Okay, then I want you to wrap it up. Okay, what do I do now? I want you to wrap the baby in a towel. Okay, I'm doing this. I'm wrapping it in a towel. Okay. Is, it, is the baby breathing? At that point, I nearly died, thinking, the baby's not breathing. I don't know how much further the ambulance or the paramedics have to get there to her. I knew that we could tell him what to do, but I wasn't sure whether he could actually do it. Words couldn't put it into effect how I felt when the baby started crying. I just thought, oh, we brought a life into the world. We really did it. I seen that baby crying, and I felt like crying myself because I was so happy. I want you to just wrap her in okay, a I, okay, I got her out. I got her wrapped up. After she was born, I was so relieved because Ronnie had taken care of her, Ronnie had taken care of me, and she was okay. She was breathing, she was alive, she sounded very healthy, and I was very, very excited. It was like a, a load, a ton of weights just lifted off me. Peace of mind, excitement, thrills, all at the same token, completely all in one lump sum. For that spare moment, it was like God has gifted me with the most wonderful, greatest thing in the world. Oh, damn, here they are. Uh, somebody, I don't know who. Uh, I don't know. I almost started laughing. I don't know if he thought he was getting ready to have company or he's going to have to entertain someone, but I told him it was the paramedics. You did real good, okay? 
Okay. You just delivered your baby. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> <laughs> Something you never thought you'd do. No, I passed out of blood, so I don't know what to think about The lady on 911 made me feel that she was a part of me. I was right there, she was right there, and together we'd done it. It felt like I was hugging her, and it was all a phone. It was on a portable phone. I actually helped this man deliver his child. I got choked up, and he got choked up. And we were both just glad it turned out the way it did. Mom's okay. There we go. Doing real good. To me, it was a miracle for him to have done something like that. I would never imagine right. in a million years that Ronnie Our would have delivered a baby. And such, and everything's going real well. We all right now? I don't think so. I was all full of blood, I was all full of that gunk stuff all over me, and I just felt my stomach getting extraordinarily weak. I just was sick as a dog. Brandon accompanied Angela to the hospital so Ronnie could drive himself. A few minutes after they left, Ronnie followed in the still bloody family car. I was on my way to the hospital, I was just all pumped up, I was all excited. All I could think of was getting to the hospital. I was speeding, and I knew I was. When those lights came on, I was like trying to think of just a hundred different things of how I could get out of this. I just wanted to go meet my child and my wife. Oh, what's your name? Ronnie Bellon. Let me see some identification. Driver license. Oh, I don't have it, sir. I was all oh, grossed out and disgusting and everything. I was just something like you would see on a, a, on a horror movie. Right here. I felt like the officer thought that I was some kind of a, a criminal that just killed somebody, murdered somebody. 10-4, Westline. When the officer verified my story, he really couldn't believe this either. Congratulations, Mr. Bellon. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a year since Brittany Ray Bellon was born. And someday, when her parents tell her the wild story of her delivery, they'll have the proof to back it up. When the birth certificate came in from the hospital, it had attending physician Ronnie Ray Bellon. Ronnie, I think, was jumping up and down because he said he felt like he had actually got recognized for what he did. <laughs> I am very proud of my husband. I think he did an incredible job. He came to my rescue, he came to Brittany's rescue, and he delivered her. And I think people are gonna always look up to her and say, she's got a special dad. Watch the truck. Watch the truck. <laughs> for the rest of my life, I don't think I could ever, ever experience the feeling of what my son my wife and with myself accomplished what we did with the love that we had for each other. You're proud of it and you're, you're, you've succeeded in something really beautiful. When I see Brittany, I think there really is a special bond because I was there when she was born. But that bond is something else that no one could ever take away. I would die for her, I think. I love her that much. There you go. I love my daughter with all my heart and soul. I brought her in this world. I love her with all my heart. Uh, uh.